Hello all, today we will have our first practical example using the Zing platform. So you are, we are going to use the Z board. Okay, this is the board I guess all of you have. Now Z board, it is a community developed board. This board is not officially from Xilinx. This is developed by FPGA community, people who are interested in developing FPGA boards. There are official development boards from Xilinx. We have them in lab. They are quite high-end ones. So if you are interested in doing research work on uh, Zing platform or FPGAs in general, we'll be using them. So for this lab purpose, we'll be using uh, the board. So when you open the package, you'll be finding the board, Z board. Now, let me clarify this. Zinc is the name of the program SOC and Z board is the name of the development board. Okay. Zinc is this one. You cannot actually see the chip because there is a heat sink sitting on top of it. So the chip is beneath that. So you can see it's a pretty small chip. This is the Zinc chip and this is the Z board. Now on the board you can see very few integrated circuit actually because it's an SOC. Okay, all the peripherals are integrated into a single chip. That's why you are seeing very few of them. In the lab, we'll, I hope uh, we'll see some processor development kits and you will see there are several tons of chips on the development kit. You have RAM, ROM, IO, everything sitting as discrete chip. So here that is not the case. Okay, so on this board we have the zinc. Then in addition to that, you can see memory chips here. It is 512 MB DDR3 memory. So actually this chip has internal memory. Okay, it has internal RAM, but they have provided additional external memory. Now the controller for this memory is also integrated into this chip. Now there are other peripherals on the chip. So as you can see, there is a VGA interface and HDMI interface for uh, connecting to display. You have Ethernet interface for connecting with internet. These four ports are for audio processing. You have line in, mic in, line in, out, and HPH out. These are for audio processing. This interface is the programming interface. So you'll be using this interface for sending FPGA pitch streams as well as uh, the software executable into the Zinc chip. This is the power supply. We'll be using 12 volt DC power supply for Zinc. On this side, you can see a JTAG interface. So this is the interface used for communication between your Z port and the PC. Okay, this interface is for programming. This interface is for serial communication. So if you want to send and receive any data between your PC and the Z port, you can use other interface. You can use the Ethernet interface, but the easiest one is to use this interface, UART interface, Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter interface. So the details of this interface you will be learning in your lecture. Next to that, there is a USB interface. This is a USB slave interface. And next to that, you can see one, two, three, four, five. These are called P mode interfaces. They are used for connecting additional uh, uh, peripherals to the Z board. For example, if you want to interface a camera with the board, it is possible you can buy a, a camera which has P mode interface and you can interface the camera here. Similarly, you can use uh, Bluetooth interface, you can connect ADC, DSC, all kind of peripherals using these interfaces. So there are five of them. Then here you have eight slide switches. Okay, and there are five push buttons here. This can be used for giving input. And there are two additional push buttons here. So total we have seven push buttons here. On top of these slide switches, you have eight LEDs. Then you have an OLED also, organic LED. Okay, so this can be used as inputs and output. For giving input and output. Okay, then what else? Okay, here you can see a big connector here. This is called an FMC connector, FPGA mezzanine card 
interface again used for interfacing other daughter cards other small uh, PCBs you can interface mostly we'll be using ADCs and DACs to interface with the Z port okay so that's it those are the major components now more details about the board you can find online you can go to the website zboard.org so you'll find all the details about the board there if you're interested to find out more but for starting our lab this much info information is enough now one thing i would like to mention is uh, zinc is not the name of a specific chip it is the name of a family of chips okay so there are several chips coming under zinc family the particular one we are using here is xc z020 that is this chip it is a uh, not very low end it is a medium type soc so there are higher versions which have more logic capacity there are lower versions also which has lower capacity so depending upon the logic capacity depending upon the number of pins for example this chip has 484 pins actually uh, you can't see it on the back side because of the sticker otherwise you can see the pins here which looks like uh, ball grid array so this has 484 pins so depending upon the logic capacity and the pin number we have different chips coming under the same family so this is a medium end chip okay so that's about the board in addition to that uh, you'll also get the power supply for the board and uh, you will connect it here 12 volt and you need two micro usb one for programming so one you will be connecting here which is the programming interface next to the power supply and unfortunately the board comes with only one micro usb so for communication for sending and receiving data we need one additional micro usb which you should be connecting here The USB interface we are not going to use, at least this semester. Okay, that's it. So this one you will connect to your power supply. The USB you will connect to your computer. So the drivers for the programming and USB interface, they should be automatically getting installed. If they are not getting installed, we will install them manually. But most of the computers, there won't be an issue. They will be getting installed automatically. You can just go ahead and use them. Now on the board, there are a lot of jumpers. You can see here there are five jumpers. There is one jumper here. There is one jumper here. Never ever change the position of these jumpers. Okay, Keep them as such. Don't change their position because they do certain configuration of the board. If you change them, um, sometimes you will find like the board is not functioning. Okay, so remember to keep them in the position. And uh, when you power on the board, we have a switch here also. Make sure this green LED is turned on for power supply. If it is not turning on, there is something wrong with your power supply okay so that is the basic introduction to the board now to do this you need certain software so when you install vivado in your computer actually three softwares get installed one is vivado like this one 2017.4 i guess that's the version you have another software is vivado hls this one and the third one is sdk software development kit You'll be using this Vivada software when you use the PL part. Vivado HLS is used for converting C code into Vlog or VHDL. This semester we won't be using it. And SDK will be used for writing program for the processor part. Okay, so today we'll be using only the uh, PS part. So go ahead and take the SDK, which should be 
and uh, Silinx Design Tools and this one Silinx SDK. Okay, you will have 2017.4 version. So, uh, as you will see, uh, Xilinx SDK, it is developed based on Eclipse platform. So, you might have seen before if you have used Eclipse for Java development or C++ development, it may look familiar for some of you, it may not look familiar for some of you. Okay, so in Eclipse environment or for Xilinx SDK, first thing that you need to do is to choose something called a workspace. So, here... Mm, there is no special concept of project. What you have is workspace. So all the files that you use for a particular project will be stored in this workspace, which is basically a, a directory. So remember to have separate works for workspace for separate projects. Okay, otherwise every file will be stored in the same folder and it will be confusing later. And you can keep it wherever you want and by default it will store in C users and your username so let me call it hello world as the name of my workspace so he will create a folder called hello world here on this path and all the files will be stored there okay okay and say create Okay, so this is the welcome screen and what you have to do is you should click on create an application project or you can go to file and choose new application project. That's what you should do. Remember we are writing only the software today, only for the PS part. Now you can give some uh, name to the project. So following the tradition, the first program for software will be our Hello World program. Okay, so I'm going to call my project also Hello World. And this option is checked, use default location, that is your workspace, so keep it as such. Here you have to choose the operating system that will be used by the ARM processor in Zinc. Now if you drop down, you basically have three options. There is Linux, there is standalone, and there is free autos. Now Linux, I guess you have some idea what it is. Standalone is a very, very primitive operating system. Sometimes that's also called a bare metal operating system because it is so simple, actually. Okay, so it gives the minimum support. It gives some uh, interrupt handling, some IO operation but it doesn't support multitasking or multiprocessor operation. Very basic support actually. Free Atos is a real-time operating system. So at least for this course, at least at this point of time, we will be using the standalone operating system. This will be the operating system running inside Zinc. Okay, so choose standalone. Here you have to choose the hardware you are going to use. You know, at this point, you should choose this one, Z Hardware Platform Predefined. Later, we will be changing it. That I will explain you what this hardware platform exactly means. So remember one thing, if you are using only the PS portion of Zinc, that means you are not going to use the FPGA part of the chip, you should always choose this option. If you are going to use the FPGA part also for developing your, your hardware, uh, we will use it uh, differently. I will show you at that time. Okay, so for the time being, choose that hardware platform predefined. Here you have to choose which processor core you are using. Again, remember Zinc, it is a dual core processor, ARM processor. So this is the first processor, Cortex A9 underscore 0. This is Cortex A9 underscore 1. And standalone, it doesn't support multiprocessor. At one point of time, you can choose only one processor. Okay, so you can choose either of them. Let's choose the first processor. Which language you are going to use? And if you are using standalone, you should write your code either in C or C++. Okay, so we'll prefer C at this point of time. So choose C. 
and again what support package what it is i'll explain you later he will automatically create a port support package or bsp called your project name underscore bsp so keep it as such click next here you can either start your project from a template or you can start fresh from an empty project so you will choose an empty application and choose finish Okay, so this is the screen you are going to get. Again, okay. quite familiar, those who know Eclipse. On the left, you have the Project Explorer. There you have this folder, your project name. Under that, you have the source folder. Under that, all your C sources will be stored. At this point, we don't have any C source. That's why it is empty. This is the so-called the board support package. This is the so-called hardware platform for, for, for the time being. You ignore these two. They will be always here. And we are going to concentrate on the source folder. Okay. So let's write our first code. So you right click source, choose new, and choose uh, source file, C source file. Okay, source file. And I am calling again this as hello world.c. So remember to put the extension .c here, it doesn't add it automatically, remember to put it. And he creates an empty C file for it. Now traditionally when you write hello world, this is, you write I guess, you write hash include stdio.h, main, print of hello world and here also it's perfectly fine you write your code you save your code and your code will be automatically compiled and linked because by default here under project option there's an option build automatically click that means whenever you change anything in your source code and you save it, either control S or click here, it will automatically compile your code. Okay. If there is any syntax error, when you compile, it will come here on the problem, so you can see what the error is. The compiler will give you the error here, so you go ahead and correct it and save again, and he will recompile and it will go. That's it, so we have done our first project. Now, let's go back to the workspace and see what actually happened there. So my workspace was under C uses in, I guess it was under Rivado. Hello world. So this was my workspace. So you'll see a lot of files are created that's why i said each project keep it in separate workspace so the interesting thing here is your project name under that there will be source folder and your your source code .c file is actually saved here you can see here now there is another folder called the debug folder okay and if you open debug folder you will see a file called your project name .elf okay ELF. And this is the file which will be sent to the processor from your computer for executing it on the board. Okay, so this file you will send it through the JTAG interface to the Z board to the ARM processor inside the PS of Sync. And the processor will run this program and you should be able to see the hello print. Okay, so remember ELF file, executable link format. Um, you can look up in internet how this file looks like. It's a binary file. Okay, so this is similar to the exe file in Windows, which is used for executing on a Windows platform. 
and in in this platform when you use standalone operating system you'll be using an elf file that's the executable the same folder there is a source folder again inside that you can see the dot o file the object file so remember your code is initially compiled and the output is an object file dot o then it is linked and the output is an elf file which is the final executable file okay so oh, okay let me introduce one more term here so traditionally when you write c code what happens is you write your c code you compile it and you execute okay and the compilation linking and execution everything happens on the same system on the same computer here that is not the case here you are writing and compiling your code in a pc environment then the code gets executed on a different environment you are running in a uh, writing in a windows environment here but your code will be executed using an arm processor which is a separate system okay so this is called a cross compilation so here basically you are doing a cross compilation that means your compilation and execution they are happening on two different systems and if you go to the console you can actually see this is the compiler used this is a gcc compiler again for arm environment okay and this is the one used for compilation this is the compiler he takes the .c file and he creates the .o file then the linker comes here he create, takes the .o file and gives you the .elf file which is the file executor so make sure there are no errors before you try to send your code to the processor okay make sure there are no errors if there are warnings make sure whether they are critical warnings or you can just ignore those warnings so once you have done this much we are ready so our board is already powered up what is left is connecting the two usb interfaces computer so connect both of them now <clears throat> here I have written print of hello world so where my where my print will come out so remember that port it doesn't have any screen okay there are HDMI and VGA interfaces for con connecting to monitor but uh, how, how, how can you control a monitor from Z port or zinc is a altogether different challenge so all the print statement that you use here the output from this print statement will be sent using the UART interface so remember this board I showed you there's an interface called UART universal asynchronous receiver and transmitter which is one of the most popular interface for serial communication more details you will see in your lecture so through that interface uh, that board will send this output to your computer now you should have some software here which can accept that information and display it on the screen okay and the software that we are going to use to do that is called Teratom so you should also install Teratom if you are using your personal computer so you should choose Teratom and go to serial and it will highlight one of the serial ports com ports okay you choose it after that you should go to setup option choose serial port and the speed option you should choose 115 200 okay this is actually called board rate uh, speed actually what speed means is something called a board rate again details you will see in your lecture and the speed at which the board is going to send data is 115 200 bits per second so the rate at which the board is sending should match with the rate at which your computer is going to accept the data if if these two numbers are not matching you'll see gibberish will get printed on your screen so make sure it is always 115 200 okay so make sure this much is set now, when our board send any information, that information will come on the screen. Fine. 
Now let's come back. Now you have to send that ELF file to Zepo. Okay. To do that, you should go to Run and choose Run Configuration. Okay. Run Configuration. And this window will come. Here you should double click this option. Signing CC++ Application System Debugger. Okay. And you double click. This window will come. And here you should choose the debug type as standalone application debug because we are using standalone OS. Local hardware platform. You don't have to change any of them. Keep all of them default. Then you should go to application option. And you need to choose which processor. We are going to use this processor for execution. So click it. And make sure under application, your ELF file is highlighted. So we are going to use hello world.elf. Okay. Okay. So remember this step. This step you have to do only once for every project. Okay. You just do it once and click here, apply and choose run. When you choose run, what is going to happen is that ELF file will be sent to the board. And here you can see the pro progress. Okay, and make sure it reaches 100%. And you should be able to see this print. Launch script is exported, so and so. Make sure you see this much. That means he has successfully sent your ELF file to the Z board. Okay, if this print is not coming, something has gone wrong. And we need to check what happened. Okay, once this happened, if I take my serial terminal, I can see hello world is here. Okay, so from where this hello world is coming, this print is actually coming from the processor inside Zinc. He's sending it through the UART interface, and that information comes to my computer, and it is captured by Toratom, and he is displaying it here. Now, if you want to run it again, next time onwards, you just click this run button. You don't have to choose again run configuration. He remembers it. You just have to click it once or drop it down and choose this option, which we already created. Okay, and he'll say debug is already running. That means the processor is already already running. Do you want to relaunch? Yes. And again, he will send the ELF, and you'll again see hello. So each time you click this button, you'll see one hello world print here. Okay. Now, if the speed, we chose 115, 200 instead of that, if I choose 9600, that means the computer is expecting data to come at 9600 bits per second. Actually, the board is ending at 115, 200. Let's see what happens. Try to run it again. Nothing got printed. Okay, because he couldn't find the data. Now, let me choose a value close to this. Okay, let me choose this one and try to run again. Okay, this is what you'll see. Okay, it, it will show some gibberish, it doesn't make sense. And why it is doing like that, you will again learn in the lecture. Basically, the speed at which the transmission and reception happen should match. And you should always choose uh, the speed as 115200. That's it. So, this concludes our first practical example.